Chapter 3. The body of the white convertible had been gently unloaded from the trailer onto the parking lot next to Uncle Bart's service station. Okay, the next step is to lift this thing up so you can work on it. I have eight wide concrete blocks that we can pile up two blocks high to give you room to operate, the mechanic explained. Go in the bay and get the big hydraulic jack. Jerry scurried to the garage and returned towing the heavy device. He placed it under a 4x4 timber that Bart was holding up under the two front frame forks. After jacking the forks up high enough to slide two blocks under the forks, they placed the blocks under the frame and let the jack down. Now we will raise the back section up and put the first layer of blocks to support the rear of the car, Bart instructed. After a second round of jacking and supporting, the body was raised 16 inches all around. This car is not going anywhere, Jerry's uncle declared. It's solid, the boy agreed. It takes extra time to secure a car, but you always want to think and be sure. I have seen too many repairmen with missing hands and attended funerals for good men, nice men, who did not take the time to think and be sure. Their wives were all sad, their kids were all sad, their friends had to say goodbye to them at the cemetery. All because they did not take the time to be careful, Bart continued. I'm glad you're showing me this, Jerry said sincerely. Playing around with old cars is a lot of fun, but you have to be thinking safety all the time. And if a little voice in your head says, wait, something's not right, then you better look around. I'll always do that, agreed Jerry. Okay, normally, when you get a car, you check the oil, water, and trans, and then go cruising. But here you have the vehicle all taken apart. The gas tank is out. You have access to the whole underside. We're going to clean the bottom and paint it with undercoating, which will preserve the car forever. Pennsylvania has five months of ice and snow. The state puts salt in the road so people can go, but these chemicals eat up metal. Most 25-year-old cars are severely damaged, but yours was in a building, so you have, a, you have good steel to work with. How do we go about cleaning the bottom, Jerry wanted to know. Well, first we will get a tarp and spread it under the car. Then we'll get some brown tape to mask off any metal on the side bottoms that is painted white. The bottom sides are cleaned and rust free, so protect them with tape. After that is done, we're going to sandblast all the metal clean. Sandblast? Yes, I have all the gear to do it, and you will need to have on a full face shield to protect your eyes and skin, Uncle Bart instructed. Also, mask any wires or open end of the brake hoses. You don't want sand getting in there. You can mask the bottom of the firewall. The paint there looks decent. Uncle Bart presented his nephew with a small bucket with a cone-shaped bottom. A hose ran out of the tip of the cone and ran up to a nozzle with an air hose fitting. Jerry studied the device and asked, how does it work? Run a hose into the air compressor and plug it into the nozzle. There's a plastic bucket of sand on the floor behind the tire changing machine. Put some sand in the sandblaster, aim it carefully, and pull the trigger on the knowledge, explained the mechanic. When the sand is used up, get a dustpan and brush and sweep up the sand from the tarp. The sand can be used again, and I won't have a mess on the asphalt. Jerry went to work carefully, spraying the metal to get a clean surface. The process went slow, but thorough. After an hour of blasting, Jerry went to, into the garage for further instructions. I got the whole bottom clean. What's next? Okay, we're making progress. The uncle reached in a paper bag on the desk and extracted four gray cans, spray cans. You have to shake these up for about a minute before you spray the paint. Listen for the ball bouncing around. Got it, responded the boy. Now after you get the sand and equipment put away and painting done, we have to cover the car in case it rains. 
pull the tarp out from underneath and shake it out real good. Go around back and get the old shed door out of the scrap wood pile. We will lay that out over the open cockpit of the car. Then we will tilt a pallet up against to the windshield and cover everything with the tarp. When it rains, the water can't pool up and push the tarp down. The water will run down. We'll put a piece of plywood over the front area to support the tarp. One more thing, Uncle Bart continued. Where are you keeping the title? Right now it's in the glove box. Well, that should be put in a cardboard file folder marked Nova Convertible and kept in a filing cabinet. I don't have a filing cabinet. You can find a small one at a yard sale for around $3. It's very useful to be organized, Bart explained. And you put all repair receipts or parts warranties in there. You'll never regret being organized. By working four hours a day for the four nights that Clem was attending classes at Monco, Jerry was able to earn $80 a week. He kept his expenses under control and was able to pay back Uncle Bart's loan for the car. One Saturday, Bart called his house to report he had found a potential parts car. Come to the garage this morning and we will check this thing out. It's only about 15 minutes away. Clem spotted it behind a house in Phoenixville. He said he looked at the inspection sticker and it was expired. It sounds like a good candidate for a deal. A middle-aged man came out of the house and greeted them in front of a 1964 Chevy 2 four-door sedan. This is it, asked Jerry, to get the inspection going as he studied the blue car. Yes, it was my wife's car for many years. It ran well, but one day she was coming back from the store and she heard a loud thunk, followed by a bunch of clangs. It was just down the block. That was lucky, Bart responded. It was. My boy and I towed it over the cable. We bent the bumper in the process. It hasn't moved since, the man continued. What do you think that was, asked Jerry, turning to his uncle. It sounds like a rod went but you have to take it apart to see what happened. It doesn't look good at any rate. That's what my boy thought. We figured it was a lost cause. One of his buddies wanted it, but he never got around to picking it up. If you guys want it, I'll give you a good deal. Okay, let's have a look around. Jerry here is putting together a sh shoebox convertible. Some of these parts could be of use, Bart explained. Jerry bent down under the back and reported, the gas tank appears solid. I don't see any scrapes or dents. All right, the windshield looks good, and it's tinted, which is a plus, observed Bart. Do you have the trunk key, asked Jerry. It's in the ignition with the starting key on a ring, answered the owner. Very good, said Jerry, as he opened the driver's door. Uncle Bart examined the front fenders. There was some rust with small holes through the metal. It did not seem to be a serious problem. The fenders uh, are probably salvageable. There is a spare tire and a bumper jack, called Jerry from the back. Uncle Bart opened the hood and examined the motor. Hmm, you changed the alternator. Yeah, we changed it last spring. It will stop working, the man replied. After unscrewing the radiator cap, he peered into the opening. Then he reached down and grabbed the dipstick to check the oil level. There's no water showing in the radiator, and the oil level is too high. That would indicate water's mixing with the oil. Probably was a rod broke through the water cooling jacket. Okay, Jerry, go to the truck and bring out a small jack and a crowbar, Bart instructed. Once he had the jack in hand, he put it under the passenger front coil spring and lifted the tire until the tire lifted the car until the tire was one inch off the drive. Then he slipped the bar five inches underneath the tire and lifted. He then shook the wheel side to side. How does it look? asked Jerry as he watched the procedure. Ball joints aren't worn. Tie rods are a little loose, but those parts are inexpensive. The important thing is the steering frame, pitman arm, idler arm are all greased and not bent. I'll have to check the other side, but all the parts you will need seem serviceable. It has a basic power glide automatic transmission. 
Did you ever have anything done to the trans? He asked the man. No, that always performed well. It has a push-button radio, Jerry announced. Yeah, that should work okay, acknowledged his uncle. This year would we'll have a transistor radio. The 1962s had tubes. You always want to stay away from those early radios. Go to the truck and get me an adjustable wrench. Crawl underneath and unscrew the oil plug on the rear axle. Put your fingers in it to see if it's up to where it should be. We ran the car for the past eight years, the owner commented. Always ran good. We parked it in the garage when the weather was bad. It has around 98,000 miles on it. It seems solid enough for what we need, said Bart. Jerry, while you're under there, take a look at the exhaust pipe and muffler. It's old, but I don't see any holes, and the oil is right up to the hole. Good news. All right, put the plug back in. We are interested, Uncle Bart declared. How much did you want to get for it? If we took it to the yard and put it on the scales at Goldberger's, we would get around $50. Does that sound like it would work for you? It's a deal, returned Bart as he put out his hand.